We will understand it better by and by. Hallelujah. Can I be heard? Yes. All right. We are so late because we failed to join early, but then we have to start. So we're not going to wait for people. Okay. So God bless you once again for joining. Yesterday, we started a, a revival and it's a marriage conference. And tonight is day two. So we are just going to wrap up things and pray as I said yesterday. Recording in progress. All right. So if you have someone that is not on, you can call them to to join us. Okay. Who will give us an opening prayer? I know I'm talk. should pray for us. Pray for us. Are we, are we together? Can someone pray for us? Usually I ask this to know if we are really online. Are we online or I'm talking alone? Yes, sir. Okay, so pray. Nobody we can pray. Here. Let's pray. Oh, Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Lord, our God, we thank you for yet another day. We are grateful for how far you have brought us. For all the many good, good things you are doing for us, we say thank you. For all the battles you have won for us, we say thank you. For all the victories you have given us, Father, we are grateful. We commit tonight into thy holy hands. Spirit of the living God, come and have your way. Come and manifest yourself in our presence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So before we continue... Amen. Who can tell us what he or she has learned yesterday? Gloria, since you prayed, you can you can just say something. What did you learn yesterday that you want to share with us? Love language. Um, touching, so that touching, has... touching. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. What else? Oh, that's all. Okay, who else want to share something? What, what have you learned? What did you learn yesterday? That maybe, if not heard before or hearing again, you feel, wow, this is so important. Evelyn, you were not on yesterday, right? So I don't know if you've followed. Okay, I'll we mention that. that. Come again. We learned that. Okay. We learned that um, it is not the females that determine the sex of a child, but the, uh, the chromosomes carried by the male sperm is what determines the sex of a child. Okay. Thank you. Who else want to share what they've learned? Yesterday. I'm sure if I want to wait, we're not close today. Is that not so? So I should just continue my thing. Eh? All right, so we are on Facebook as well. Kindly share. 
the link with your friends, those who are not able to join on Zoom. They can join on Facebook and watch us live. All right. So maybe a quick recap of whatever we did yesterday. And then we, we continue. Okay, so we talk about marriage as an institution ordained by God. We talk about the perceptions that we have about marriage, the little things to do. And then we are continuing today. Okay. And then when it has to do with perception, we no, before we go to that, we, we talked about the rules God has given us as, as human beings to be able to have a fruitful marriage. And for the woman, yours is to be submissive. And for the man, yours is to love. And I said that this, these things, they are just wet, but they are very deep. It looks so simple that, okay, love your wife. It doesn't end. There's more to it. And I give one example that to love means to give, to love means to support, to love means to be there for a partner and all that. Okay. And to submit, I also talk about it. That it's not about you lying on the floor and all that, but making your man feel that he's the head and he's the man of the house. All right. So our perception, we talk about companionship. We talk about um, people going to marry just to make wealth. So they, they've spotted one nice guy somewhere. Let me marry this one so that when he dies. I mean, why would we even have such a mindset? It's so bad. But people do it. People also get married because of sexual satisfaction. And sometimes they go in and then they are disappointed. So the way they have hyped themselves back I'm not even seeing it like that. Uh, and then we also looked at childbearing or sex of children. People get married because they just want to give birth. Or their parents are giving birth and they want to be called mother. They want to be called mama. So they go and get uh, married just to give birth. And then people also, uh, uh, how do you call it? The, the sex of the child determines how the marriage is going to be like. If the woman is not giving birth to a, a middle child, then they say the woman is the problem. But yesterday we learned that it's the men that actually determine the sex of a child. All right, we talk about the little things that you need to do. We talk about the love language, the physical tie, the house of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation. Okay, so today, yes, we talk about transparency as well. So today we are going to look at, today we won't spend this time, but then I, I wanted to give you the floor so that we discuss. But yeah, like the case, you guys are so, so, so annoying and boring because it's a free program so people don't take it serious. I think next year we should be charging for this. Even if it's five city and two people come out, talk to them to be behind closed doors. So you, at least, you know, next year this is not going to be free. The marriage seminar is not going to be free. Uh, there will not be any Facebook live too, because I've noticed that people take advantage. It's, as far as it's free, you don't really you know, find out is what is it coming to talk. How, how many years did you even get married? You know, those comments, but I don't really care. We are just doing what we have been sent to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. So today we want to look at our friend. You are late. You are very, very late. Or you just close from work, eh? <laughs> I sent you a message on WhatsApp. I'll finally check it out, okay? Okay, All right, I so, was traveling, so I just got back to catch him up. Okay, so check the message. Eh? The little deadly forces. Now, the, the, there, are, there are some little forces. I call them little forces because... People don't respect or let me use the word they don't value uh, just a minute let me look at something they don't value these things okay uh, they, they, they 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 feel oh, this thing is small this thing, what problem will it cause do you understand and the reason the thing is a fox is that you know what forces can do right uh-huh so it, it look little but it's very very serious it's very very dangerous are we following? That is why it is termed little 
pauses. So now you 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 when we start talking about the things, you realize ah, so this thing truly they are little forces. So, but before you know, ah, you have destroyed your home. Are we together? Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about concerning the little forces has to do with petty fights. Okay, petty fights or petty quarrels. I don't know how best you've been mentioning it. Petty fights. Uh, yes, naturally, there are some people that like fighting or quarreling. So I say, especially the women. In every do say Jere or Vivienna me, when you see the person, you say that this person is a Jeremy. Sorry, let me pick a call. Yo. So, so you know, so these people they like to fight a lot and all that. Aha. Uh -huh. So the slightest, and then they are fighting. Sometimes it's not them people fight because sometimes uh, there is bitterness, there is anger. So they are looking for the usually I I, I there's one thing I say to people that uh, when your partner becomes so bitter or when your you know something small happening, the person is so aggressive, you realize that sometimes this thing pile up, okay. Maybe you did the first one or the first one happened, they overlook the second one, the third one is a similar thing, the same thing. So you realize that the anger becomes so serious. Uh -huh. So sometimes usually the fights are just built up from certain things. Okay. Now let's look at the scripture, James 1, 19, 20. But it was a way for my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh in the righteousness of God. Now, scripture is saying man, but it's not talking about the husband alone. You know, man represents the whole race, right? So God is saying that be swift to hear, be slow to speak. There are some people, they know themselves. And they've even been saying, it's as for me, if you do it, I, 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 I won't forgive you. As for me, this in here, you don't know me, go and ask of me. And I always ask, who are you? Do you understand? There are some people, whatever you say against them or about them, they will surely give you a reply. And I'm also, so, hey, so can't you hear something and just ignore? They feel like if I don't reply, then mm, I've lost the battle. What sort of battle? Who is giving you a crown? Or who is giving you a trophy? Do you get it? Okay, let me read. Um, the marital conflict is not just a difference of opinion. Rather, it is a series of events that have been poorly handled, like I said. Uh -huh. So it, it, it means that something happened before you didn't solve it well. And that happened then before you know, then there is a conflict. Do you understand? Okay. Five, little things before you know. You know, every day the same thing. And then there is nothing like somebody is changing. It looks like it's the same thing. Hey, today we thought about this. You, you, when you, you, you look at the trend of, of fights that you rather is the same thing, then it means somebody is not really or willing to change. Do you get it? And one thing that really happens, this is what I want to say this in here. You see, a lot of women forget the fact that their husbands are the head. That doesn't also make them to be democratic. One, listen. Okay. But then you, you, when they, they say that as a lady, you see your husband as your father. So now go into yourself, whatever you will not be able to stand face to face, shoulder to shoulder with your father and do you, you should never do with your husband. But a lot of people don't respect after he's my husband. You don't respect your husband. You don't value the man. You feel, okay, we are married and the two shall be one. It doesn't end there. You, 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 you see, you do all those things and then things don't go well with you and you think it's somebody's doing, but it's your own fault. Do you understand? Yes, when there is a problem, you don't, don't run off, you don't go, people will say things and forget about themselves and then tomorrow you guys are okay again. And then the same person, you have called names, the same person, hey, you are you a man? You two, Can you be called a man? Okay, don't you see your colleagues? You two this and blah, blah, then tomorrow is the same person that is having sex with you. It's the same person that you are saying, I love you. It's the same person that you are so proud of. So you see the petty mistakes we, we, we make. Uh -huh. So when fights happen, yes, fights, Actually, for me, I, I take quarrels as, as a way to build up on, on the relationship. You understand? When it happened, then, okay, you learn that, okay, this person doesn't like this and that. Then you learn certain things. It builds the bond and all that. But it shouldn't be deliberate or it shouldn't be something constant. Every day is the same thing. Are we following? Every day is the same thing. Now, if care is not taken, you are going to, 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 you are going to give room to bitterness. And then the love that you have for your partner will disappear. Do you understand? You, you will no longer love the person. You'll be staying in the same house, but how you, you'll be tired of the person. 
you are the person is your husband or you are the person is your spouse or your wife do, do you understand and also when you are fighting or when you're having the misunderstandings learn to give each other a listening ear or when one person is on the floor let them land Yes, people, you just say, hey, when I'm angry, do you expect me to be this and that? Then you don't have self-control. Do you get it? Because there's this mean that when you're angry, be careful the things you say. And when you're happy, be careful of the promises you make. Do you get it? People will go and drink and then they'll drink and be drinking and then they'll be making promises that they cannot fulfill. Then you don't have self-control. Because what really defines you, what really makes you a, 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 a matured Christian is when you are in, in the midst of a heated argument or something and how you handle yourself, how you control yourself. You know, yes, as human as you are, there might be certain words that will come out that will hurt your spouse. But be careful that you don't say damaging things that tomorrow when they ask you to take, you can also swallow it. You understand? There was a story about a man that, that picked up the lady. He practically picked up the lady from the gutters, as we always say. He did uh -huh. everything for the woman. And then, and then, uh, 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 uh. so it's like the lady had nothing. It was the man who did everything, right? And then one day there was a misunderstanding and then he just came out from there. Now, before then, he promised never to, the lady said, never tell me this or remind me from where I'm coming from. And the guy said, okay. But one day something happened. He got so, so, so angry and then he couldn't control himself. So he said, then after, after all, you cry, who are you? Who, who are you? Or who are you? Was I not the one who brought? And he said that the lady started crying and then he left for work. By the time he came back, the woman committed suicide. Because, in fact, however or whatever she was in before she was brought out, it was a serious shame or disgrace. So she doesn't want to be reminded. So, of course, self-control could have prevented that suicide also. But suicide is a spirit. If you are not so strong, it will overcome you. And then she killed herself, wrote a note down, and the man came and so it was too late. Do you understand? So, people of God, when you are married, whether you like it or not, I've always been saying my wife is the most annoying person and she's the most loving person. She's, she's my worst, she's worst thing I've ever met and she's the best thing I've ever met. Do you understand? I'm using the, the thin thing, not because she's a thin, but I, I'm sure you believe, you, 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 you know what I'm talking about. So your spouse will be your headache, your wife, your husband will be your trouble, they'll be your problem, but that is what you are married into. You always have to work it out. You work things out. When tensions are high and all that, Devise a way as to how to, to, to solve your issues, okay? If you know that you are that one, that when they do you one, you do two. If they do three, you do six. Have a way that, okay, if somebody is doing something against me, okay, I'm not going to walk, walk out. Or I'll just do this. I'll just do that so that there will be peace. Now, I want us to look at something. People usually say that, you're having conflicts and all that, then maybe you are married to the wrong person. This is a picture, uh, uh, shall I say, a quote from Dr. Gray Chapman. He said, conflicts are not a sign you are married to the wrong person. They simply affirm you are human. Yes, to some extent, conflict doesn't mean, okay, you've married the wrong person. Do you understand? Let me also tell you that if you are married and then you don't have a relationship and then you don't have misunderstanding, hey, then somebody is pretending. I'm telling you especially relationship and now this boyfriend he doesn't like fight to so this girlfriend go and marry and see what they will show you those who are married have you not gotten to a place or a point that i say ah is this really the person i've married yes that's the person you've, you've gotten married to usually marriage is like a, a meat with fat okay when you put it on fire the the one that has the much fat then the 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 the, the, the this the you begin to melt yes. uh -huh. so marriage actually reveal people's uh, character hidden characters and then and all that so when you are fighting listen there are some of the fights also especially during the courtship stage or the relationship it, 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 it's actually telling you that this person is going to be problem or trouble when you marry them there are exceptions to this but then in marriage some petty ones and all that doesn't mean that it should be the end of the world now when this petty fight also happen you see tensions are high Never ever quarrel with your spouse as a man and refuse to perform your marital duties. You are fighting, you are quarreling, so you don't give money or you don't provide. You are fighting, so you don't have sex. And as a woman too, you are fighting, so you don't cook for your husband. Sorry to say you are not serious. You are not up for marriage. Because whatever you do or whatever that is required of you as a spouse, when you get married and then there is a problem, misunderstanding, you don't stop doing them. How many things have we not done against God? 
But has he stopped blessing you? I need answers. So. Has he stopped blessing you? Yes or no? Hey, are there people there or they no. are gone? No. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. no. Ah, it's so, 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 so you, don't, you don't fight with your, your, your husband, you don't fight with your wife, then you won't cook. You won't even you um, touch each other. Somebody said, say, your private parts are not fighting. It's your heart and mind that are fighting. So please, when it's, it's, it's time for bed or whatever, allow those two ones to do their thing. But the problem is, there are people when they have they misunderstanding, have there is there pride. Is. Pride sets in. Hey, me, I should lower myself. I don't know if people, I don't know whether somebody has ever told somebody that when you quarrel and then you, the, there is a trophy that they give. There is no trophy. You understand? So never ever fight and then you, you abandon your responsibilities. Also, when you fight or when you quarrel, never let it pass a day. In fact, a day is too much. 10 minutes is too much for you to hold grudges at couples. Okay, 10 minutes is too much. No matter how heated it is, quickly come back to yourself and say, mm, this thing, you know me, I've learned this the hard way. I, I'm somewhere like, wow, this is not my wife. Okay, but you see, there is one thing that sometimes you also don't understand that as men, even if you are a small boy and the person is a big girl, a small boy will never allow a big girl to, to, to be run, running the mouth or whatever. No, 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 no. It's a natural thing. So until women learn this thing that Charlie learned, he, he is my father. Okay, I don't have to be rubbing shoulders with him and all that. You let them have their way. That is where the submission comes in. You know. Let the man feel that he's winning. He doesn't destroy you as a woman. A good man later on will come to his sense and say, oh, okay, I'm sorry for doing this and all that. Do you understand? But the moment you begin to challenge, men don't like that. It's as if say you are, you are trying to challenge the, the headship with them. Uh -huh. You see, it shouldn't be like that. So when issues happen, quickly resolve it. You see? However, you are, how you are able to handle your husband determines how you handle your children. How you are able to handle your wife determines how you handle your children. Do you understand? When little things happen and you are not able to forgive, you are not able to let go, eh, then what if your children offend you? Then those are now you throw them away. You throw them away with the bathing water. You see? So please, when things happen, quickly let go. Anger is a good thing, but don't let it cross some limits. When it crosses, I mean, then it means you are really, really not ready for marriage. Because it is your husband, your wife that will always worry you. They will always tempt you. They will always trouble you. They will always cause issues for you. Uh -huh. But you must learn to live with these things so that there wouldn't be problems in the marriage. Okay. I'll pause here and take questions or submission. Those on Facebook, if you have anything to ask, you can just type in there in our reactor room. Does anyone have anything to say? Or any question. Please talk, or oh, please talk. If you can't talk, type. Are we here? Yes, please, we are here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll ask those who are married and uh, how they resolve conflict when there are issues. From the bottom, my sister-in-law, sister Sena, are you there? When you are fighting with Brahma Matthias, how do you resolve it? We want to learn from you. After that, I'll go to Gloria. Who else is Margo? Then Evelyn will be the next. Who else? Seriam will follow. Who else? Okay. Yes. Sister Sena, are you there? I know some of you can hear me, but you don't want to talk to you. Thunder will fire you. Okay, Gloria, when you get angry or you have quarrels with your husband, how do you solve it in your own way, in your own small way? Share with us. Yeah. In actual fact, uh, we have resolved not to be angry for far too long. Okay. So anytime there is an issue, we try to talk about it okay. as soon as possible so that we resolve it. So we do dialoguing. Okay. Yeah. That, that is good. It, it's perfect. You see, 
anybody that is committed to marriage or the marriage they are in, anytime they, they are resolved to do A or not to do B, they make sure they see it too. You understand? But uh, some people, they talk about their things. Maybe they are just anxious to speak. They talk about it, but they don't do it. It's a very bad thing. Okay. So that, that is actually a very good point. Good point. Uh, Seriam, Seriam, are you there? When you are fighting with a fool, how do you bring the situation down? Oh, Sarah has disappeared. Oh. Okay, let's assume it's the network. Uh, who else? Oh, Evelyn is there. Yes, I'm also married. Evelyn, can we hear you? Hello. Please, let's make the session interactive. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so when there is a conflict, what we normally do is, um, I especially, I'll be itching. So mm -hmm. I try to bring the issue on more so that we can settle it, then I'll be okay. If okay. him also, then what you also do is try to also bring the issue on board, then you'll settle it and be okay. That's what I can okay. say. All right, that's good. So she's also talking about talking about the issue. There are some people, they will intentionally do their thing and pretend nothing has happened. Those people, they are deadly. The person knows that he or she has done A or B, but they will, they will not. I don't know. Well, maybe God used a different dust to create them. It's, it's bad. Okay. When issues happen, talk about it. Talk about it. Okay, this and this. And then also, there is one thing I've been telling people that Anytime somebody tells you that, hey, Akosua, yesterday, what you did, I don't like it all. What a matured person would do is that, oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do But then what, what did I do in case the person forgets? Okay. Or then the person, oh, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean to do this. Okay. But you see, it was because how you said the thing that that is how we dialogue as matured people. These are even outsiders. So. And then about couples, then your husband or your wife says, oh, babe, yesterday you did this, or honey, yesterday, you did that. eh, eh, didn't you see the way you thought, didn't you see, but me what the Bible is saying, a harsh answer, that's what, he stirs up anger, a gentle one or a soft one calms it down, do you understand, so one, one, you see, sometimes you think you are your partner, but it, it's, equal, it's equally showing how immature you are, are we following, so anytime somebody expresses displeasure, it means, it, it, one, you might be at fault, two, the person might equally be wrong. But the moment the person is saying it, that it, it means that he or she is the one experiencing the pain or whatever it is. To so yours is just to say, well, you are sorry. It doesn't take anything from you. A person who does not know how to say sorry in marriage, you will not enjoy, you will really, really not enjoy your marriage, especially when issues are up. Do you get it? So anytime at all in, in your marriage, your partner says that, okay, you've done A or B, and then I really didn't and like this and another. It takes nothing from you to say you are sorry. And it ends there. You see, for me, one thing that melts me, the moment you say you are sorry, I'm okay. But not the sorry that as if they are forced you to say the sorry and expect me to be smiling. No. You, you, I, I expect people to be responsible for the things they have done. Take, be responsible for it. Take responsibility for what you have done. Uh -huh. All right. SNM, can you hear me? You are also married. How do you resolve issues with your husband? Seriam, you are on now. Will you be able to talk? If you have issues with your husband, how do you resolve it? Uh, he's the one who... He's the one who resolved the issue. They never... You take it back from them. Okay. So he's a good husband. When things are not well, he's the one who brings it up, right? He makes sure that there is peace. He makes sure that you guys talk about it. That is also good. Okay. I'm sure people will not talk again, so let's just move on. All right, another thing we want to look at, which is also a little false, but it's very deadly, ignoring your responsibilities. Okay. Yesterday, I told you that marriage is partnership, right? It means that you need to do things together as couples. 
it has also no, it also, it, it, how do I put it? It doesn't also mean that what you are supposed to do as a woman, the, the man has to do it. Let me try to explain that whether you like it or not, the woman in our generation, yesterday I was telling you that the man has to teach the woman how to cook. Okay, so now after teaching you to cook, you are my help. My help, not, I don't want to use the word help as well as it sounds as if you are a, a mate. So you are supposed to help me. Now, so you help me cook, you help in those, right? So now it is more like your responsibility to look after cooking and all that as a woman. Okay, even in our homes, our parents have tried to raise us as young girls, you should learn how to cook and all that. Okay, fine. Husband is supposed to also help. Today I talk about this. But never ever get to a place that you ignore your response. You know that as a woman, you have to make sure there is food. After the man has provided, you should you, you make sure that, okay, I need to cook or something. Don't ignore your the response. Be like, okay, I'll be the, you are also old. So you don't want to think about what we we'll eat. They don't, we don't do that. Sometimes, sometimes I don't know what I want to eat. But anything you give me, I'll be able to take it. But maybe you are waiting for me to tell you that there are days I said, okay, let's eat A, let's eat B, let's go out, let's do that. Those are those days. And there are times, the moment that the person is saying, okay, I, I don't know. I don't, because Charlie, this work, being a pastor, talking about things, doing this, sometimes we are not ourselves. It's just the grace of God that I, I don't forget about my wife. When you see me prioritizing her and all that, I'm doing it with a sense that I don't want to forget about her when i say forget about her, i don't want to miss certain little things i have to do as a man you, you get it so as often as i'm posting and i'm doing that it reminds me that i have a role to play as a husband do you understand so but there are days that the mind is so occupied at that moment i'm not expecting you to come and ask me what will you eat especially when you ask what will you eat and i say i don't know you should be able to figure out something quickly our oh, mothers used to do this right by the time you come back from school your mother has done something our mothers will even cook on the floor before they put it on fire. I don't know how God has really helped them to know these things. Uh -huh. So these are, these are responsibility. For instance, the man knows that he's supposed to take care of the home. You don't wait for, for your wife to ask you for money. It's unfortunate we don't have the men here. I think I'm the only man talking. But on Facebook, some people are watching. My fellow husbands, I'm telling you that scarcely should you let your wife ask you for money now if your wife knows your financial background or your 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 uh, is that, is that how to, yes they, they know what is in your account okay if there is hundred thousand in your account the woman knows there is money so obviously she knows things have to be okay when the woman knows that there is zero zero thousand in your account she's not even going to trouble you or or bring up issues that i don't have a i don't have b what i do as a man is I pick my wife's uh, 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 needs from her conversation. Unless, of course, I don't have. Back from when we started courting, back from school and all that, when she was in school, that is what I do. We'll be talking, then she will be like, hey, my shampoos are even finished. I, I need to buy some. She's not asking me. Oh. She's not even saying that oh, I should buy it, but it just dropped, you understand? Or you'll be talking, hey, I, I think I need some jobs. I, you know, we are conversing, right? So what I usually, I pick those who watch my status, those you see that there are a lot of surprises between us. Before you know, then I buy something. Before you know, then she also buys something. It, it's so beautiful. So never ever wait for your partner or your wife, especially to, to you, you know that you have to provide. In a week or a month, you've not given money. How do you people spy? And never also be, and be saying that my wife is working, she's on salary. What is she using her money for? What is her money for? It doesn't concern you to your, as a man. You understand in this, and I know you're very conveyed to people to do that. Just play your role, play your part. When you do that and you don't have any, the woman will support you. Do you understand? The woman will support you. I know there are some homes, they share it. I'll pay their bills. I'll pay their school fees to take care of their clothes. You, I mean, I mean, when it's like that, eh? so, okay, if I am paying the school fees, eh? and then th there are no clothes to wear, does that mean, and you don't have money, does that mean I will not buy the clothes for you? Do you see where you, you get yourself should I say stranded or locked up? Uh -huh. So we should, we should be careful about these things. Now, there are, there are things everybody does. You, you are supposed to do A, you are supposed to do B. Don't wait for anybody to tell you to do it. But then in doing those things too, always be there to help. Always be there to, 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 to support your partner. Okay. Is there any 
question to this one or anything to add? Does anybody have anything to say? No. Okay. Who has question? Sorry, I'm saying she has nothing. Or is there anything somebody wants to add to it? All right. Please, my so we question. Go to the next. Okay. You are talking about um forgiveness, like sorry, this thing, this. Thing. Mm. So my question is, so if your partner maybe does something and the person keeps saying sorry, maybe sorry has become like, please. The norm. Uh huh. And then the person keeps repeating maybe the same kind of thing which you don't like. And then when you see, when you just prompt the person, the person will say, oh, I'm sorry. And then you see, when it gets to that time, like you, you, you are, you, you get used to the sorry. And it's like the person says sorry. You tell the person that you, I know you do that again. You see that thing. Mm -hmm. So now the person, it will get to some time. The person will know that when he or she does that thing and he or she says sorry. You will be you will be bored because you think maybe the person will, um, like the sorry is not something like okay. it's not from the heart. Okay, so yeah. with this situation, how, mm. how will you settle? Since you are telling us that, um, we talk about we do dialogue and that thing, and then we just settle it and we let it go. After settling and then keep repeating it, so what do you do? Okay, there is, there is one thing before I come to that one. You know, I have people that let, let's talk about sinning or falling short. Uh, today I was at a program and I was telling them that I was saying that do you, do you remember the first day you 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 kissed or you had sex? You know you're not supposed to do it. Do you see how guilty you 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 became or you felt? They said yes. You will not even be able to pray again. You go and cry. You go and do this. You go and God, I will not do. Forgive me and blah blah blah. And then then you feel okay. It looks like God has forgiven you. Then after some weeks before you know you have done it again, you go and cry again. And in fact, saying sorry shows that at least you acknowledge the fact that you are wrong. You understand? Now, what is bad is that when you get to a point that your conscience is dead, you no longer even know that you are doing something wrong. That is very wrong. Now, do you know why Jesus, when they ask Jesus, how many times should I forgive my partner? Who knows it? When they ask Jesus, how many times should I forgive my friend when they offend me? What did Jesus say? 77 times, I don't know, 7 times, 77. <laughs> you are saying, or oh, meaning you are not sure. Okay, go and research. So Jesus calling that number in a day, oh, in a day, can you even say, in a day, in a day, can somebody offend you 10 times in a day? Is it possible? No. It's not possible. So Jesus is just trying to say or let us know that as often as you can forgive your partner, you should do it. Do you understand? Uh-huh. So you let, let them continue doing whatever they are doing. And then just keep on taking the sorry when they, they, they say the sorry. But somebody who is who is who has a good conscience rather than who I keep on doing the same thing. And also one thing you can do is you help the person to come out of that thing. Especially when the thing is constant, it's the same thing. Maybe, maybe it's more argument, then the person shouts on you. So, so you, you the person says sorry, then that's me the same thing. Then you say, hey, how do we how do I help you come out of this? Then you talk about this how we go. Marriage is a school. You don't leave people to be as if and this is your life. Sometimes then you get tired and cassam. You like. This one, yeah, this is who you are, do whatever you want to do. You understand? But you help them. Sometimes they don't know this, and that is why you are their partner. So you help them talk about this, and then it will, it will, it will build a healthy marriage. Have I answered you? Yeah. Are you answered? Okay. So another thing I want us to look at is family interferences. This thing can actually cause divorce. Okay, in this era that we find ourselves, it can really, really cause divorce. Uh, how do we say it? 
you know, they say when you are married, you are married into a family, or let's say you are not just a man or the woman, you have married a whole family. It's just a statement. It doesn't also mean that the family has the right to control your marriage. Do you get it? It doesn't mean that the family has the right to decide how the marriage to run. No, 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 no. Marriage is about or is between two people, two matured people who have decided to stay together. Are we following? So you leave them or you let them do whatever they want to do. Yes, once in a while, you can advise that when they need it. But you don't impose on them how you and your husband were, how they used to do without the family. No, 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 no. The, the marriage is a different journey altogether. So if your journey passed through Kaswa, they just want to pass through Temali. Tamali, allow them to pass through there. Do you understand? So family interferences can actually really, really destroy marriages. Now, the Bible says something in Mark 10, verse 9, that what therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So there are a lot of families that can, can, can come into marriages. God will ask you these questions. Do you understand? You let them do what they want to do. You let them be uh, 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 live their marriage life how they want to live it, you see. Now, never be the reason misunderstanding or separation will come in between my, any married couple, you understand? Whether you are a parent, relative, siblings, or no matter how close you are, your ideas or advices are not binding to any couple. They can only agree or disagree to what both of them see as good. Don't impose your ideas or your decisions on them. Do you get it? Now, there's a scripture in Matthew 18, verse 6, that says about who so shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Now, a scripture talks that any, anyone who make this little one sins, Just a minute. Eh? All right, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, so so um if you are you are you are a relative and then you make any of these couples to sin against God or against each other, God is going to ask you. For instance, this, this common issue has to do with childbirth. And then when am I getting my grandchildren? When am I this? And when am I that? And when am I that? Then you make your partner to go and do what they are not supposed to do. It's very bad. Do you understand? Or and then, hey, when are you going to buy a car for my, my daughter? When are you going to buy me a car? When are you going? You know, those petty, stupid little things. You understand? Or some, some in-laws can just get up and go and visit their children. They say, hey, it's my own son. It's my own daughter. And they, no, 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 no. The moment you have accepted those drinks and those things, and then they are married and declared husband and wife, you let them be. You let them be. Yes, the person is still your child, but you don't really have that say again. The Bible says, therefore, a man will leave the father and mother and be what? And join to the wife so the two become one. So your father or mother don't have a say in your marriage again. Do you get it? So family interferences actually can also cause divorce, especially in this, 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 this dispensation that we find ourselves. All right. Is there any question with this one before I, I move on? We are closing soon and then we'll pray. Now, does anyone have anything to say about family interferences? you when will you give birth those kind of stuff when are mm. you doing that sometimes it's annoying just to ignore them but how will you how long will you continue to be ignoring them hey sometimes knowing people doesn't really form sense into their head sometimes our people need to be placed at where they belong okay you know, after I spent just less than a week and I had to leave, I traveled out. So I was away for three years. In fact, some people, even when I was away, somebody, someone, <laughs> I'll pose maybe myself with a baby or, 
or my wife with a baby or and then people will be like hey is that your child then i ask myself ah I, i've been away for three years now how how did, did i send a sperm car or plane to my wife to get pregnant you know things just to uh, poke their nose into your face you get it especially this one that i'm back people are counting they are really really monitoring sometimes i'll post pictures people will be like hey your wife is looking big oh. they just want to hear me say oh she's pregnant she's not pregnant yeah you won't get it you won't get it so for me when i realize it, even my own parents they don't ask they don't talk about that if you are ready to give birth we will you understand if god if the time is right god want us we be like hey pan and nina now you guys should give me children we will do it we are married to enjoy ourselves yes that is one as for children they are gifts from god if we god now okay we want a gift god will give it to us so sometimes ignoring will make the people feel so entitled or say put them at where they belong not that it should be a, a abusive or disrespectful but uh, if there are certain things you need to tell people they need to know the person will go home and go and think about it tomorrow they'll not do it again do you get it so when these things continue you talk to the person or the, those who are involved about it and then they they, they will stop worrying you You see, one problem that we have, that was what I talked about yesterday, is that the perception, the perception. People, the moment you get married, now then people have started counting. So there's then some people, when you get married, and then they see the woman has given, they say, hey, that was not just four, four months ago. Then the person was pregnant like five months ago, but the stomach was not showing. You know, this little gossip. Uh -huh. It's the perception. People get married because they want to do what? Give birth. And also, never ever let a guy lie to you that get pregnant for me and I'll marry. It's a lie. It's a lie. 90% of them is a lie. You get pregnant and then and then they, they, then now the baby is old. And then you say, okay, won't you come and see my parents? You say, oh, uh, okay, then let's add another one. Then we'll, then we'll forget about them. You get a second one, they will not come. Then when you ask them, won't you come and see my parents? You say, oh, now we have two children. We are living together. We are taking care of them. Does it even really, is it necessary again? You see, you see how they mislead a lot of people. Uh-huh. So please, never ever let a guy tell you that I get pregnant. It's a lie. Now, the reason why it's a lie is that usually relationships that you thought the person you don't want sex before marriage. Okay, no sex before marriage. And the guy knows that the only way he can be having sex with you is to tell you pregnant for me. Because usually pregnancy is not one, one, a one-time something. You, do you get it? So the person would, okay, let's be doing it. He's just having sex with you, you know. It's not because he wants to marry you, Bia. I'm telling you, I'm a man. I'm telling you. These are agendas who they can be very, very something. Don't, don't let marriage entice you that you want me to get pregnant. Is that what God even said? And I tell people that what makes you even think that you even get pregnant? Or what makes you think that when you get pregnant, you'll be able to have a safe delivery? Especially when it's outside the will of God. Then we have brought a lot of children into the world through negative and bad ways, and then we 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 we, we, we end up making them suffer in the future. You see, so never let anyone uh, 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 interfere into your relationship or marriage and deceive you into doing what you you are not ready for. Is there any other thing? Does anyone have anything to say or question? All right, there's nothing that we are concluding. I want you to know that marriage can last forever. Marriage can actually last forever. Now, most marriages are founded on love, but it is choosing to maintain and grow that love that can be the challenge. That is where commitment comes in. When you are married, it means you have declared that you want to be committed. Okay, you have declared that you are, or you have chosen that you want to maintain and grow that love. You see, God considers marriage to be an agreement between a husband and a wife, as well as a commitment between the couple and him, God. So he expects us to dedicate ourselves to the relationship or that the marriage and to recognize our responsibilities, duties, and loyalties, both to our spouse and to God. So when you are married, you are not only married to your, your wife or your husband. Or God is the center of it. So whatever you are doing, you make sure that God takes the glory. Whatever you are doing as couples, you make sure that it's centered around God. You don't do things in, in your might or in your own power as an individual thinking you know it all. When you do that, God will just step aside. 
and watch you to 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 handle it on your own okay so we look at the scripture malachi 2 16 for i hate divorce says the lord the god of israel to divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty says the lord of heavens i mean so guard your heart do not be unfaithful to your wife god hates divorce there are some marriages that I've seen and I've heard about them that this person they have they are divorced and all that. Then I I just boil within myself. I'm like, no, this this could have been solved. This could have been handled. You see, exception of death and adultery or whatever that is way any other thing that happens, quarrels and those things. I'm not saying stay there when they are beating you. you there is a way to handle that one too. So you see. But don't be so quick. There are people that are so quick. The smallest thing, and eh? take me back to my mother, take me back to my father, especially women. The smallest thing, certain things that are not supposed to break marriages. You see, when you are saying this thing, it will, it will affect you. It will affect you. Today, a lady was telling me, she was, she was talking, she was, <laughs> after administration, then she was, she was saying something. Immediately, then the, the, then the Lord told me that, okay, this was what we have said before. And I asked, he said, yes. I said, good. You have said this yourself. Do you expect it to work? A man disappointed you. Then they asked for me. All men are the same. I will never get married. So even when you get a good man, if you are dating, and you are planning for marriage, something will come because you have said that you will never get married. You understand? Small thing, eh? Take me back to my mother. They, one day, one day, the devil will work on that thing. If God is not part, then they will take you back to your mother. You see, so be careful what you say. God hates divorce. God hates divorce. When you are, you see, that is why it is good. You study marriage, think about, take, learn about women, study about women, study about men. This is how there's that book, that Venus and Mars book. You, you, you know, when you know these things and you, me, I don't know, but by the grace of God, very young, I seem to know much about my, it's, it's a grace, it's a calling. You understand? I'm not saying my marriage is the perfect one because we also and usually God will also give you a woman or a man that he knows only you can handle. You see, so whoever marries you, don't take it for granted. Don't feel that hey, if I leave you today, I'll get another person. Who told you that? That other person you, you get, the person will send you to your grave. You see, so no matter what happens, don't let divorce be the focal point. Divorce should be an option when all other options are failed. And definitely all other options cannot easily feel like that. There are certain people who are eagerly desperate to divorce before even they get married. So the smallest and then they run. This are Kimi issue and all that. You think it was not a planned thing. Because they know that if I divorce you, ask for, ask for the wealth, I will get it. So uh, somebody will say it's better to die in, in, in helicopter in Dubai than to die in in in, in uh, uh, Kansua. You understand? Forgetting that all they all die be die. You see. So so divorce should never be in your mind. It will never be something that you desperately thinking about. You easily think about it. The smallest thing, the slightest thing that happened and, and take me back, then do this. It, it is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. And I pray that God help us in our marriages that we don't fall victim for these things. Okay, I think hand is up. We have a discussion, then after that we pray. But I your hand is up so you can, you can talk. Okay, Dr. Fan, um, thank you for the very um, enlightening session. So I have a question. I saw a post on Instagram today and it relates to me. So if you don't mind, I'll read it. Then okay. uh, you explain to me because I want to know, my question is I want to know what a godly marriage is. Okay. Yeah, so... This lady said, I'm a 32-year-old virgin who has a problem, I think. Having been a virgin till now, I feel like I magnify it more than necessary. It is important for me, but when I look at my friends and others who are not, and they are still doing very well. Can you hear me? Oh, that? Please, Please, those who are co-hosts, help, help me mute the noise. Eh? Okay, go on. Okay. Uh, so I'll just take it. I'm a 32 year old virgin who has a problem, I think. Having, having been a virgin till now, 
I feel like I'm magnify it more than necessary. It is important for me, but when I look at my friends and others who are not, and they are happily married with their children, and I'm still single, and I don't even have anyone in my life, I feel that maybe this was the point. Like this whole waiting must count for something. So I, the question I want to ask is: This is something that comes up uh, among even my circle of friends because. Mm, some of my friends, we, we always have these conversations, like we know girls who are doing very bad, people who are sleeping with people's husbands and all those things back in university. And some of them, yeah, some of them are married now and supposedly they look like they're happy. I'm knowing they're married, so you can never tell. And then some of my friends say like, we've kept ourselves all these years and we, so now we don't even have anyone in our lives. And I, I remember the, the last time we had this conversation, then I was saying that, oh, I mean, not every marriage is marriage and God, there's a godly marriage and what is not, but how, what is the what is the clear line? What is a godly marriage? Like, what is the difference? Because, yeah, sometimes we see all these people who have led very terrible lives from what we see, but it's like they are rewarded. They have everything they want. And you, the one who have kept yourself, you, you don't have anything to show for it. So I just want to know. Okay. Now, one thing you need to know is that what, what really makes you think that those who live bad lives and they are married, what makes you think that their marriage is, is perfect? Or what makes you think that they are having it easy in their marriage? Now, Dr. Hong, you see it. You see it every day. <laughs> You see it. One, one thing I want to one thing I want to talk about is that you see, usually there are people that we all know this person is bad. This person sleeps around. This has gotten married, and me that I'm being a virgin, me that I've never done this. Hey, as of now, my husband has not come. Now, there are two things you need to look at here. One, you see, I think yesterday I made mention that you could maybe in the calendar of God, He wants you to give birth at 31. And then by grace, by chance, by privilege, you got married when you were 26. You understand? And then right after marriage, 26, you guys have been trying to give birth. 27, nothing. 28, nothing. 29, nothing. 30, nothing. Five years. He doesn't love me. Didn't he say he wants to give us children or blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, according to the calendar of God, he wants you to give birth at 31. So until the time is right, you won't get it. It has nothing to do with whether you are, you are righteous, you are holy, you are perfect or not. If the time of God concerning your life is not right, it is not right. There is nothing you can do about it. That is the gospel part. Now, what you need to do is, when you know the will of God concerning your life, you are always at peace with yourself. If as of now, you, you, you still have issue, like there is confusion. One, God is not the author of confusion. There is still confusion within you. Meanwhile, you pray and all that. Then it means you've not really settled on the will of God concerning a particular aspect of your life. Do you get it? I always tell my wife that when I was very young, very, very young, God showed me the future that I have. As I'm now, I may not have A or B or C, but I know where if I'm going. I know what I have in the future. You see, interestingly, a few people see me and they say these things, and I'm like, wow, this person has seen my future. Sometimes people just see the thing as prophecies and all those things, but it's exactly what it's supposed to be. So one, don't let, don't let, the Bible even said it, don't let the, the riches of the unrighteous make you frightened or fret or scared okay they are like chaff it, it does not last it just it just stays there for a while and it is gone mind you the devil also give things the devil also open doors so there are certain doors that the devil open you see do you think this one is from god because he tries to imitate god he tries to do things like god do you get it now talking about a godly marriage it is centered on love a godly marriage is centered on love now, when I talk about love, you realize people that are married and then uh, 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 a partner does something, the person does not really, in fact, let me not even go far. You go to the church and then there are presbyters, maybe elders, deacons and all that. And then you see a deacon fighting. Then you see a deacon saying, I'll show you that. And hey, if not that, I'm a Christian. Or is it, uh, if not that, is it, no, is it I'll put my deaconess aside or I'll put my pastor aside and show you. That person is not a, a correct Christian, no. The person is just being identified with Christian because a, 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 a godly person, that's why Jesus said, when if they slap you, you turn your other ear to them. It doesn't mean you should 
uh, 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 necessarily turned outside is, is, is a proverb. You understand? So when a godly marriage, there are certain things or so many things that goes on, but you let love be the factor, the center of it. A godly marriage, love, love is patient. You understand? Love does not quarrel. Love does not do the love. You know that scripture, right? Love is patient in the sense that now, the ungodly marriage, eh, when, when, for instance, this childbirth issue, children are not coming. In an ungodly marriage, the person will go for another person from the village. Or the person who went, even have people have secret children in town, their wives don't know about it. That is an ungodly marriage. I have heard about godly marriage that they have been there, or, or you know, who share this sometimes. Somebody said that 17 good years. Okay, friends, 17 years they were married. Now, and the man actually even misbehaved. He has to go and uh, sleep in town, blah, blah. He was called, he got demoted, sacked from work, but the woman never left the man. The woman was still there. She forgave him. They were still there and blah, blah, blah. 17 years before they gave birth to their first child. Do you get it? So a godly marriage is centered around God. Everything that gives glory to God. They don't do things in their own power. They don't do things in their own will. They don't do what the society is saying, but they do what the Bible is saying. It, 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 it can actually also be a topic on it to own that I may not be able to go deep in now, but I think, I don't know if I've answered part of your question. Ravali, are you there? Yes, yeah, so I'm there. <laughs> I say yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I know you are not so satisfied. Oh, it's not, it's, it not, it's not, it's not, it's not that I'm not satisfied, but. You, you are, you are just wondering it should be like that. No, I, I think it's a reality of Christianity. It's not easy to that, be a Christian. Right. So. Because the Bible yeah. said many are the afflictions of what? Mm, the, righteous. the righteous. But God will surely deliver them out of it all. I always tell people that the thing that is making you cry today, very soon. In fact, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people. Some of them had issues of childbirth. Some of them married. Today that, you know, I prayed with them by the grace of God, they are okay. They don't even chat me again, no. Now they are enjoying their marriage. Yes, I'm telling the gospel part. People that I met, things were so bad by the grace of God and then things, they don't even mind me again. It, it is like that. It is like that. So as for the afflictions, yeah, yeah we go through them, but God is always uh, 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 it's always there to, to deliver us. One thing I just want you to be, to be conscious about is never see people, especially in court, you feel they don't deserve it. No. Yeah, yeah, not, not necessarily you though. But there are we, we all say it. You just be there, then you hear that so so and so has gone to abroad. You say, ah, this person has gone abroad. Hey, that me, I'm still here. Nah, now nah, you who are <laughs> you see. It's like maybe that is not God's will. That is, hey, so this person has also gotten married. Hey, then me, I'm delaying. You are delaying according to whose calendar. You understand? You you allow God to just do everything and then you realize that, oh, wow. If I had God, I've been telling you people that, you know, I tried for my wife to join me abroad more than four times. It never worked. But we still pray for people to get their breakthroughs. But after everything, I got to know the reason it never worked. So sometimes when God is doing things, we don't, we don't, we, we don't have to rush it. We just have to be patient with God and let him handle situations for us. Is there any other question? We have a discussion. Two of them, then we pray. I don't have any other thing to say. Okay. So we have a discussion, and the, the first one has to do with can marriages be without misunderstandings and quarrels? Do you think there can be a marriage? That uh, yeah, fight. There will not be any misunderstanding. It's a discussion. You can tell us yes, no. You tell us why. Let's go. The floor is open. Okay, I will say no. Okay, why yes. do you think so? I will say no because. Marriage is between two um, different people that are coming together. And even though I'm talking about Christian marriage here, God is a mm -hmm. common factor in that marriage. The man and the woman were raised from different backgrounds. Okay. So the 
even siblings, our siblings, we always have this understanding with siblings, but it's just that the love we have um, overshadows everything. So not to talk of marrying someone from a different background altogether, probably some of them, you are not even from the same tribe. So upbringing and values, some of those uh, cultural values might be different. So for me, I think misunderstandings are bound to happen. And they are actually a way that a couple can grow stronger because I think once they come and you're able to settle it and iron things out, that's when you find your, your place together as a couple. So for okay. me, I don't, I don't see any marriage without it. All right. Thank you, Papa. Papa says uh, it's not possible. Does anyone have a contrary view? Mama, she has said it all. Because okay. there's no way that you guys can stay together, as she mm-hmm. said. If it, there's no way they stay together without her, how much more from different mm. parents, different traditions, yeah. different background, everything different to stay together. Definitely there might be understanding, but the most important thing is how you solve the problem. Mm. Okay, thank you, Seriam. That's that's great. Okay, so I think we are agreeing on the fact that there cannot be any marriage without me that misunderstanding or quarrels. Okay, so we go to the next discussion, but maybe somebody who have a contrary view, you can, you can still come back and tell us that, oh no, there can be some. All right, the next question is, should marriages be made way that once you enter, no coming out? I mean, like, you know, marriage has to be legal, right? So there is a law that says that, and then you sign document. When you marry Abnape, you can never divorce her all. So in so doing, people can do their homeworks well, well, well before they enter. Do you think marriages should be made like that? There should be a law that once married, forever married. <laughs> Those who pray the once say forever say mercy. What do you think? Did we get a question? It's on the screen. Okay, somebody was talking. I was saying that thing. Hmm. Never be because you say um, if you divorce. Divorce shouldn't have happened. So you sit down there, even mm-hmm. to the extent of you want to die. Okay. And you say, for the sake of children, for the sake of God, for the sake of blah, blah, blah. So you sit down there and you see that okay. your end is coming. No. You can run for your life. You start to run for your life. Okay. That is uh, my opinion. That's good. I'm praying for a time that there will be some marital laws that any any spouse that beats the other should be jailed or you know things. Okay, you can come out. So if there are things that will, will, will force you to come out, like they they will, they will stipulate them A and B and C. You don't do that. Uh, uh, that can cause physical damage to you. You know there are laws governing those things or checking those balances. I think. It will really help. Anyway, does anyone have any other thing to say? Should marriages be made in a way that one should have no coming out? I can I be heard? Yes. I personally think this is this is actually how God made marriage in the original Good. sense, like it's a covenant. That's how I think that is how it's supposed to be that you enter and then you do life together. That's how I think it, it's supposed it's, uh, originally God intended it for. Nice, but sorry. it's just that, um, I mean, there's a lot of evil in the world and all this evil have got into humans. That's why you marry, I mean, I always say, why would you take someone to the altar and make a promise to love them and preserve them in front of family and friends and God, of course, then later mm. mistreat them? 
So I think it's just the um, evil that is abounding, but under normal circumstance, that is how it's supposed to be. Okay. That is actually true. God said, what, therefore, what, whoever God has joined together, nobody should separate or put asunder. You understand? So uh, under no circumstance should anything separate couples in the name of divorce or whatever it is. So you are right. That is God's uh, original intent for us. But like you said, you don't know the mind of man or woman. All right. Is there any other? Okay. So lastly, there, there's something on the screen that says being a Christian. Okay, hello. If I understand, I, I think that with that no circumstance, there should be a divorce. That was. Come again. I didn't get the impact clearly. I'm trying to find out are we saying that no circumstance, there should be a divorce? Okay, I can't remember what I even said, but then, yes, God hates divorce, okay? But there are certain things that biblically yes. approves or allow, mm -hmm. allows divorce. Adultery is one, and the death of a partner. I think there are three, there is another one, okay? So, but as Christians, in the case of adultery, there should be forgiveness. You understand? But it doesn't also give your partner the moral right to go and do it again. Because fine, circumstances can make somebody do some things or certain things. Things can happen. Things can happen in your marriage. You are not getting what you like. In it, you are human. In the first place, you are human before being joined or whatever it is. So if, if that thing brings it early head, yes, as couples are written as a godly marriage, you should be able to uh, solve that issue and let it go. Okay. So God's own intent is that there shouldn't have been a divorce in the first place. It doesn't rule out entirely divorce. I don't know if you get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so there is a note here that says that being a Christian doesn't make your marriage trouble-free. Okay? But it means you will always come out victorious. There was one time I had a meeting with my wife and then a fellow pastor reminded me of the father. Ah, say you are counseling. You are praying for people's marriages. Do you think the devil will take his hand off your marriage? That was when I woke up. I'm like, ah, this is true. And I listened to a sermon. I think Justice Freeman said, the deliverance go through what? what the, like whatever you are delivering people from, no, you have to go through it first. Do you get it? So when you experience that, and then you know how to go about it. Uh -huh. So usually certain things we talk, sometimes people talk to me and then they are going through this and I just smile, I just laugh. I'm like, ah, now you are crying over this thing. Uh -huh. So uh, being a Christian doesn't mean that your marriage is going to be uh, uh, trouble free. Things will happen. But what it means is that when these things happen, you always come out victorious. Because the Bible says that God said he will create an escape for you. When temptation and trial come and you can't solve them, there will always be a way. There will, God will always give you a solution. Provided the marriage is built or centered on God. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our, uh, should I say, discussion? Or our talk for tonight. So I'll pause and maybe if there are questions, I'll take some. If there are none, then we pray and close for tonight. Does anyone have any questions to ask? And please, the prayers, we are praying for each other, praying for everyone. So I wouldn't want to be the only one praying. Okay. I could say, so maybe I don't need this prayer and I'll go and pray it alone, but we are praying because of you. So for the next five minutes, party on mutual, let's pray together. Do you get it? Is there any question? Or addition or contribution, anything?
Eh, hey, you be for mind me, oh. <laughs> All right. So that's the end. So we'll pray. Let's enter into a moment of prayer. I want to pray a few prayer points and then we close for tonight. First of all, I want to just pray and thank God for this session yesterday and today. I want to thank God for even the institution called marriage. Because whether you like it or not, marriage is a beautiful thing. The mm -hmm. devil is always fighting it because, listen, right from he said, whatever God has done, Satan is fighting it. So it is normal. It is normal. But then we we are we are we are supposed to know that we always come out. So you want to lift up your voice. You just want to say, Father, I thank you for this institution called marriage. And I thank you for this session in Jesus' name. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, we thank you. Give all the praise. We worship you. We magnify you. We thank you all that you do for us. We thank you for your study and today. We thank you for the, the teaching session, the discussion, and everything. In the name of Jesus, we even thank you for marriage. Oh God, this is you. We saw that it was not good for man to be alone. And you created a helper, you made a helper for him. We appreciate it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now we want to pray. There are people that are going through things that they don't talk about. There are some dying marriages. People are really, really going through things and Charlie, they wish that they never even got, got in married to their partners. But it is not too late. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Okay. Whatever that is sport, whatever that is going by, that is what God repairs or restores. We want to pray and tell God. He said, therefore, when we are joined people together, no man should put them asunder. So you want to lift up your voice and say, Father, any marriage that is going through difficulty, any marriage that is going through hardship, Lord, intervene and resolve the issue now in the name of Jesus. If you want to lift up your voice and begin to pray. If you know any marriage that is not working out, you want to bring it before God and Lord intervene. Lord, step in in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. If you know a couple that they are going through hardship, if you know people that they are suffering, there is always tears, sorrows, and bitterness. There is no joy. There is no love. And then they, they wish they never entered. You want to pray. Whatever that has gone bad, that is what God repairs. We are telling God that he should intervene. He should step in in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight we ask you to intervene into marriages. We commit our marriages, even our own marriages into your hands. Commit our friends' marriages. We commit the church people in the church. We commit their marriages. We pray that, Lord, let your hand be in it. Let your hand be in it. Let your hand be in it. Whatever they cannot resolve, whatever they cannot do as individuals, Lord, may you step in in the name of Jesus. There are some couples that there are some partners that their mind, their attention is even off their farm. They have forgotten that they even have a husband. They have forgotten that they have a wife. They no longer care about them. As for them, what they do is that when the time is up to maybe play their role, they do in that ends. But we are telling God that marriage is supposed to be enjoyed. The, the initial purpose is for them to have companionship. We are telling God, every marriage that there is no love, every marriage that all these things are missing, Lord God, bring it back in the name of Jesus. By divine authority, we declare the hand of God over marriages. We declare the spirit of God to take control. We declare the power of the Holy Ghost should be their shield, their anchor, their guide. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You want to pray maybe the last prayer. There are a lot of people that are single. They are ready for marriage. They desire to be married, but the door is just not opening for them. God saw the need for marriage and he created a wife for Adam. We want to tell God, as these people are desiring, as you are seeing this need for them, may you create their partner for them in the name of Jesus. Let their own partner meet them and not people that take advantage, not people who abuse them, not people that will be them. Bring them the divine husbands and wives in the name of Jesus. Whoever that is struggling with promise and fail, Lord God, we bring it to an end in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that the strong hand of the Lord will give them victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise. 
I pray in the name of Jesus, everybody that is connected online tonight, from yesterday to today, on Facebook and on Zoom, Father, their marriages will never suffer any loss. Amen. Their marriages will flourish in the name of Jesus. Those that are already married and yet to be married, I declare that Lord to in the name of Jesus. Those that are yet to marry, Lord, I declare that it will happen to the glory of your name. Any family spirit that does not like marriage, that has been fighting them even before they were born, I stand against them and I declare that you, God, may you contend with those powers and those forces in the name of Jesus. Father, let there be peace in the homes of your children. Let there be understanding. Let there be love. Let them enjoy their marital blessings to the full in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we ask that you give us testimonies. The next time as we gather again, Lord, we will say, indeed, God is good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we take announcement. I think Papa is muted. So maybe Alfredina can just hear the announcement. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, are we there? Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Thank God for a successful live, a successful program. Thank God. We, we, and I want to also thank um, whoever fan and their wife for organizing such a program for us. We are very grateful. And then we thank uh members for joining us i think yesterday the the number was quite encouraging but today is not bad we want to thank you all and bl god bless you all for joining we pray that whatever that's brought us here god will answer us in jesus name amen mm. um our revival for next month please see, you can see it on the screen Jesus, the good shepherd. So let's try and prepare towards it. We shouldn't come with just, we should come with an expectation and know that God is going to do it for us. Amen. Amen. Okay. And then another very important um, announcement God's will in June, the month of June, uh, subscription for the, our Zoom will be expiring, which means we need to subscribe. And then the fee is $150, which is, I think, is equivalent to 1,800 CDs. So we try we are pleading that we all try and contribute to, um, to, to help um, for us to subscribe to it before it's too late. If not, we, we have to be doing, I think it, Dr. Pai, is it 30 minutes or something? That's old one. The yeah. one that has been cutting, cutting. Yeah, okay. That's one. It's not our that. portion. <laughs> it's not our portion in Jesus' name. So please, let's try. Amen. June, 1,800. Yeah, let's make it 2,000. We are, we are almost like um, Hmm. Let's try. Let's try. Each of us, let's target some an amount of money and then use it to help subscribe for this thing to, to the glorification of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I'll leave the rest to Dr. Fan. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Once again. And God bless you, especially those who have been standing with us. And to it also now. Can I be heard? Yes, please. Okay, we don't take it for granted. We pray that God open doors for you and you continue to do the good way. So, as it's on the screen, next month, our revival will be coming. I want you to invite someone and invite someone and start sharing the flag. I've not been seeing you share. I've been everybody online, I've been seeing you, you post things and all that, but some people they don't post the flyer. Or if you are shy, please be sharing it. Be sharing. You've been sharing our hours, but you don't share this one. Are you? 
if you need a problem, you come to me. You don't go to Pastor Elvis. But share, you won't share. God is watching you. I changing. That is just by the way. So God bless you all so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's share the grace together. Oh, before then, we want to what? welcome all the newcomers. Uh, there are some names 